Whenever you're ready, Tim. Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, this edition of Stories from the Archives. I'm Tim Nutt, director of the UAMS Historical Research Center located in the UAMS Library, and we're glad to have you here uh, today uh, for this presentation on Dr. Edwin Bentley. The Stories from the Archives series is a collaborative effort between the Historical Research Center and the UAMS Library, and um, it's a way that we can bring sort of hidden stories out of the archives and tell a little bit more about um, those stories and the people and the artifacts in our collections to the public. And so we started this series and I wanna give a shout out to, the, um, to Stephanie Gafford and Andrea Hayes in uh, the um, Education Research Services Department here at the UAMS Library for their help in putting all these, um, the, these presentations together. And today uh, we have a really interesting presentation um, by Logan Whittington, who is the resource management librarian for the library here at UAMS. And she's going to be talking about Dr. Edwin Bentley, um, who is one of the, uh, eight, one of the eight founders of uh, UAMS in 1879. Um, before I uh, turn it over to Logan, just if you have any questions, you can use either the Q&A feature or the chat feature. Um, probably the Q&A feature probably be better. If you use that, if you have any questions, and we'll answer those at the end of the session. But right now, I'm going to turn my video and audio off, and I'm going to turn it over to Logan. So, Logan, take it away. Okay. Um, can you hear me still? Yes. Okay. Awesome. I can't see you yet. Okay. Uh, give me just a second. Let me turn my webcam on. Okay, can you see me now? Yes, you're good to go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so thanks to Tim for that introduction. Uh, as he mentioned, my name is Logan Whittington and I am the resource management librarian at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences here in Little Rock, Arkansas. I am presenting this installment of our Stories from the Archive series as a representative of the Library's Historical Research Center. The UAMS Historical Research Center is the only archive in the state that is dedicated to the preservation of Arkansas's health sciences history. I hope that this presentation will showcase the valuable mission of this institution and generate further interest in what the Historical Research Center can provide. So today, as we mentioned, we're going to examine the life and professional accomplishments of Dr. Edwin Bentley, who was one of the original eight founders of the first medical school in Arkansas, which you all now know as UAMS. I thank you all for giving me your attention during this lunch hour, and let's get started. Okay, so this is just a brief overview of what I'll be covering during this presentation. We'll start with a profile of Dr. Edwin Bentley, first touching on his early life, followed by his services during the Civil War, and then some of his other professional roles, and then finally his career in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. I'll segue here to discuss the early history of UAMS as it relates to his role within it, and then move on to a summary of Dr. Bentley's later life. And then I'll conclude this presentation by providing details about one of those artifacts that Tim mentioned, which is currently held in the Historical Research Center archive. And it's a silver pitcher that was gifted to Bentley on behalf of the medical department's faculty in the year of 1885. So Edwin Bentley was born in New London, Connecticut on July 3rd, 1824. He is the son of George W. and Ann Williams Bentley. Ben Edwin Bentley's early education consisted of instruction at the local common schools in New London, as well as under private tutors. Bentley received his medical education in New York and eventually gradu graduated with his MD from the medical department of the University of the City of New York in 1849. He went on to establish a general practice in Norwich, Connecticut, and then during the Civil War, Bentley served as a surgeon and was appointed to the 4th Connecticut Infantry of U.S. Volunteers in 1861. He 
He served in the United States Army of the Potomac in 1862 and notably received commendations for his service as brigade surgeon during the siege of Yorktown, Virginia in May of 1862. Bentley was placed in charge of a number of hospitals during his time with the U.S. Army, including the 3rd Division U.S. Army General Hospital in Alexandria, Virginia, and he later oversaw all general hospitals in what is now considered the metropolitan area of that city. During that time he was stationed in Virginia, Bentley compiled a scrapbook of pathology specimens, which is pictured here. Um, it's also in the Historical Research Center archive and shows the devastating effects of various diseases on intestines. From 1866 to 1869, Bentley was appointed assistant surgeon to the regular army and was stationed in Washington, D.C. Bentley married Marguerite Ellen Williams, and in 1871, they had a son, Carl Edwin Bentley, who later became a prominent physician here in Little Rock as well. In 1869, Bentley's military orders moved him from Washington to San Francisco, California, where he held positions as both an assistant surgeon and a professor of pathology and anatomy at the Medical College of the Pacific. In 1878, Bentley was assigned to the Little Rock Barracks to act as post-surgeon. Upon joining local medical societies, Bentley became a major player in the medical community in Arkansas, and most notably for his role as one of the original eight founders of Arkansas's first medical school, now UAMS. So following the Civil War, which began in 1861 and ended in 1865, as well as the Reconstruction Era, which lasted from 1863 to 1877, the people of Arkansas were able to return their attention once again to pursuits that were left unfinished from pre-war times. This more peaceful atmosphere not only allowed medical professionals to focus on their own practices, but also fostered discussions amongst peers who had differing viewpoints about the direction that the medical profession should go, especially as it pertained to the state of Arkansas. As of then, Arkansas had no medical school, so opportunities for medical education were extremely limited, and in order to receive a formal, nationally recognized education in medicine, one had to travel out of state. Pulaski County physicians came together to focus their energy on fixing this problem. A lasting symbol of this shift was the creation of the Medical Department of Arkansas Industrial University, but the journey from idea to fruition was long and fulfilled with many obstacles that were both social and political. The idea of establishing a medical school in Arkansas can be traced back to 1870, when physicians in Little Rock made tentative plans to create such a school, but ran into their first problem. How can you study medicine, which requires an understanding of human anatomy, without access to that anatomy? Local physicians first had to appeal to the state legislature to allow for the acquisition and dissection of cadavers, which at the time was an illegal practice. Their appeals were granted in 1873 under the condition that the body was unclaimed and meant only to be used for medical research and the study of anatomy by physicians and medical students. With that problem solved, focus shifted once again to where that formal setting for that medical education should take place. The only college in Little Rock at the time was St. John's College, which was a Masonic institution located near the U.S. Arsenal in what is now known as MacArthur Park. St. John's College has been, had been established in the early 1850s and was completed in 1857. Its growth, though, was stunted, by, stunted because of the Civil War. When Little Rock fell to the Federal Army in 1863, St. John's College was commandeered to serve as a U.S. hospital, making it the first hospital in Arkansas, however tempor temporary that would end up being. Obviously, teaching ceased at St. John's during its use as a hospital. And after the Civil War, the college was returned to the Masons and attempts were made to continue its original educational mission. It never regained its footing, however. While St. John's was considered for the state's first medical school, organizers soon feared that the Masonic institution would prove to be woefully inadequate to educate would-be physicians. Initial plans to establish a medical department in collaboration with St. John's College were further disrupted by a divide in the professional institutions amongst me medical ethics questions that arose from a controversial physician's quest for membership in those state and local associations. <clears throat> The pioneering efforts of a number of local medical professionals kept the dream alive, though, and in 1879, there was a last-ditch effort to establish a medical school in collaboration with St. John's College, and this revisitation was received 
received a favorable response. A group of potential faculty was organized and met on April 4th, 1879. Dr. Edwin Bentley chaired this meeting. Bentley was then a US Army surgeon stationed at the Little Rock Barracks. According to the book, Medical Education in Arkansas by W. David Baird, Bentley was quote, by nature, a peacemaker, but he was also a man of unimpeachable character and lofty professional standards. Bentley stressed that the medical, if the medical school were to be successful, it must first be recognized by national medical associations and by the medical profession as a whole. In order to receive that national professional recognition, however, Bentley stated that the faculty would need to transition their professional memberships from the existing College of Physicians and Surgeons to the more newly formed State Medical Society, which was naturally recognized by the American Medical Association, while the College of Physicians and Surgeons was not. And he was also considering the fact that the AMA would not recognize a school founded by fractured groups within the state's medical community. Um, this slide is just a summary of some of those transitions. Um, I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but if you have any questions about that at the end, you're welcome to ask them. So he proposed this idea and a few of the potential faculty members, including Bentley himself, were not, were not members of the State Medical Society. Many involved parties were unwilling to make that transition, so Bentley considered his plan to be rejected. They eventually settled on proposing faculty members in accordance with their original affiliations, which Bentley was on board with. But unfortunately, these plans to create a medical school at St. John's College never got off the ground, in part due to this uncertainty, as well as the consequences of the Civil War that I mentioned previously. When the plans with St. John's College fell through, the physicians turned to Arkansas Industrial University in Fayetteville, Arkansas, which is the former name of what is now the University of Arkansas. It was, strongly, it was a strongly held belief that in order for this to work, the medical school should be associated with an institution of higher education, and with St. John's College out of the running, they would need to look for another institution elsewhere in the state, and Arkansas Industrial University fit that bill. One potential downside, however, was the location. Pulaski County Physicians, the forces behind the drive for the state's first med medical school, pushed for the new school to be located in Little Rock, which was the business, governmental, and medical center of this state rather than in Fayetteville. The connection was approved by the Board of Trustees of the AIU on June 17, 1879. While it had been approved, there was an important condition. The new medical department was only affiliated with the university and was not a formal part of the AIU. It was a proprietary medical school. The university would not assume any financial responsibility for its support. Despite this condition, the plans were able to move forward. The medical department was officially established in September 1879 and was inaugurated in October of that same year. This slide shows a copy of an original article from the Arkansas Gazette describing that inauguration ceremony and the governor's remarks. Since Arkansas Industrial University was not providing monetary support for the medical school, it would need investors in order to begin operations. A $5,000 capital was divided between eight investors, including Dr. Bentley, Dr. Augustus Bracecher, Dr. James L. Debrill, Dr. P. O. Hooper, Dr. Roscoe Green Jennings, Dr. John J. McAlmet, Dr. James Henry Southall, and Dr. Claiborne Watkins. These eight investors also formed the eight faculty chair positions that would form the new medical department. The $5,000 capital for, from the founding investors was used to fund the medical department's first location, pictured here, the remodeled Sparandia Hotel building, located at 113 West 2nd Street in Little Rock, and it remained headquartered there until 1890. The slide shows a photograph of the building before the remodel, which is located on the left, and a sketch located on the right side after it was acquired and opened. Today, the site is unfortunately a parking lot. So following the founding of the medical department, Bitley went on to establish a free clinic at the back of a hardware store that was close to the college. And this was the first free, cl free clinic in the city. Still on active duty with the military, Bentley was stationed in Texas from 1884 to 1886. And his absence from the medical department's faculty was very much grieved. After he retired from military service at the rank of Lieutenant Colonel in 1888, Bentley returned and stayed in Little Rock. This slide shows a photograph of Dr. Bentley and his colleague, Dr. Vincent Haler, teaching medical students at a clinic in 1903. Bentley went on to serve as president of the faculty from 1904 to 1906 and remained associated with the medical program until his death in 1970, 
17. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. So the collection highlight from the archives for this topic on Dr. Bentley is a beautiful silver pitcher etched with flowers, which was presented to him on February 27, 1885 by faculty of the Medical Department of Arkansas Industrial University. According to a notice in the Arkansas Gazette newspaper from March 1st, 1885, the faculty of the medical college had just purchased a water service or set to present to Dr. Bentley, who was quote, until recently, one of their number as he had been transferred to Texas via his military assignments and thus had to depart Little Rock and the fledgling medical school that he helped foster. This next slide shows a close-up photograph of the inscription on the side of the picture opposite the flowers, which reads to Edwin Bentley, MD, from his colleagues of the medical department, Arkansas Industrial University, Little Rock, February 27, 1885. It's followed by a list of the faculty members. The slide shows some additional views of the picture that I photographed in our archive room within the Historical Research Center, where the picture is stored. This picture was dented and in poor condition when it was discovered in a wooded area near Searcy. It was donated to the Historical Research Center by Mrs. Rodney Bond, who acquired it at a garage sale. In 1984, the History of Medicine Associates paid to have the picture repaired and resilvered by Scenti Metal of Columbus, Ohio. The maker's mark on the bottom, which is pictured on the left-hand side, reads Roger Smith & Company, Meriden, Connecticut, which is coincidentally Dr. Bentley's home state. Roger Smith & Company was established in 1857 by William Rogers Sr. and George W. Smith. It was one of many contemporary silversmith plating companies with similar names. I had a rough time finding it. Uh, quite a few Roger Smiths, and a quick search on eBay brought up many results consisting mostly of silver dishware. The company was officially dissolved in 1898 after its tools and trademarks were acquired by the International Silver Company. As I mentioned, this gift coincides with the time after Bentley was stationed in Texas for his military assignment. It's clear that his absence was deeply felt, and as such, his return in 1888 was surely celebrated. The picture represents the positive and invaluable influence Bentley had not only on Arkansas's first form of medical program, but also upon the medical profession as a whole and also within the Little Rock and Arkansas communities. <clears throat> so in these last few slides, I've compiled information about the resources that I used for the presentation in case anyone else was interested in looking at them further. So for most of the images that I pulled, um, these are from the Historical Research Center's online digital collection, which is accessible via this link, via the UAMS library website, or by simply Googling UAMS HRC. In particular, the images I use come from scans and photographs in the Images of Health Sciences and Arkansas History category, which consists of graphic materials related to the history of UAMS or of health sciences in Arkansas. Another resource I'd like to showcase is a book called Medical Education in Arkansas, 1879 to 1978 by W. David Baird. Uh, we call this our holy grail text up here. This book provides details on the history of the College of Medicine, as well as insights into the nature of the medical profession, medical licensure, and the development of medical, so medical societies and the character of state politics. In case you're interested, I've provided the ISBN for you and can happily share that the book is available for you to check out here on the main campus library, as well as at our regional campuses and from the Central Library here in Little Rock. Another valuable resource was the Central Arkansas Library Systems Encyclopedia of Arkansas, which is a free authoritative source on information about the rich history, geography, and culture of Arkansas. It is updated regularly to ensure the people of Arkansas have an accurate and accessible resource to explore our heritage. The website includes an abundance of well-researched and authored articles on the history of medicine in Arkansas, including entries on Dr. Bentley and the seven other founders of the medical school, as well as photographs and other interesting graphic media that pertain to the school's history. So this final slide this is where I've shared my contact information as well as the contact information for the HRC. We plan to continue this series, so please look forward to the next installment of Stories from the Archives, and I thank you for your attention and welcome any comments or questions that you have at this time. Thank you, Logan. I appreciate that. that was a, Dr. Bentley is an interesting uh, character and figure in Arkansas history, uh, spe specifically in Arkansas medical history. And of course, mm -hmm. 
his influence at the university is still felt today. Um, For sure. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the um, uh, chat or Q and A feature, and we'll we'll uh, monitor that. Um, before going into before doing this presentation, Logan, did you have any um, previous knowledge of Dr. Bentley, or did you? How much did you learn when you were putting together this um, presentation? Um, honestly, pretty much everything. I'm not originally from Arkansas, so just the region in particular I'm not familiar with. And I didn't move up here to the Historical Research Center until a couple of years ago. Um, the, the book I mentioned, literally I got up here and y'all were like, would you like a copy of Medical History in Arkansas? Um, so that was pretty cool. I'd glanced through it, but I hadn't read specifically about any singular person in depth. So most of it was new information. Um, it helped a lot of things that I have learned um, just cataloging uh, HRC materials um, make more sense in context for sure. Someone said it was hard to hear me. So I'm, I don't know. Um, let me... Hard to hear you, Tim? Yeah, hard to hear me. I had to turn you up a little when you started speaking. You might be a lower volume than me, but I'm not sure how to fix that. Uh, at this point, I don't know if I know how to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry that you uh, aren't able to hear me very well. I'm sorry about that. I will say that these presentations are recorded and they're, they're put on our website, on the Historical Research Center's website. Um, and um, Susan, actually, Susan asked a question. Susan, is the picture the only artifact you have from Dr. Bentley? Uh, no, I also mentioned the um, scrapbook towards the beginning of the um, pathology specimens that you might may or may not have enjoyed, cons enjoyed considering if you're squeamish or not. Um, Suzanne shared those with me. Um, I'm sure there are a lot more that can be looked at. And she wants to know what artifacts we might have from the other founders. That's not a question I know the answer to. Suzanne, you might want to chime in and, and um, see uh, and answer that question if you can. She may not be prepared to be mic. Yeah, I put her on the spot for that. Okay. <laughs> we, <laughs> we do have, uh, I believe we do have some other artifacts from some of the founders. I'm not, off the top of my head, I'm not, it's not ringing any bells. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I know we have a lot of documents from the founding of, of UAMS, some of the original checks that were written and some of the, the agreements that were made uh, between all the doctors. Um, yeah, I don't think Suzanne can unmute since she's not a panelist. Uh, hold on, Suzanne. I'm going to un unmute you. I'm going to allow you to talk. Okay, now you should be able to. You still need to unmute. There you go. That's funny. It says uh, the, the panelist wants you to talk. Do you Are you willing to unmute? <laughs> um, yeah, we have quite a few artifacts from the founders. Um, some of the more interesting ones are... Um, lecture tickets that they use to they would give to their students <clears throat> excuse me um uh, the student has to have a lecture ticket to attend i'm assuming they had to show that they had paid for their 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 uh school um and then we have like uh, doctor's bags um we have some instrument sets that belong to some of the founders um Right off the top of my head, I can't, I can't say all, but we had, we do have a lot of artifacts from the founders. And you mentioned the tickets, Suzanne, the tickets are interesting because the medical school was a, 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 a for-profit, I'll put for-profit in, in quotation marks, because it was not, it was owned by the eight incorporators. Uh, it was not an officially part of the university, although the university let them use their name. It was, in, it was owned by those eight founders, and uh, the curriculum was a little different, and so when the students were there, 
in in school they would purchase certain tickets if they were interested in an anatomy lecture they would purchase the ticket to go to the anatomy lecture lecture uh, so it's, it's interesting to see those tickets we have another question is the book with the typhoid tissues the only type of resource you have of that type I believe that is the only uh, uh, artifact we have like that, is, isn't it? Susan? Yes, yes, it's the only uh, human pathology specimen collection that we have. And that in itself, that has an interesting uh, history as well, because I believe that was found on a was that a front porch? Am I remembering correctly? Yeah, we have quite a few. Um, uh, books that would belong to Edlin, Edwin Bentley and his son, and they were apparently found on a, a porch um, that had kind of fallen in, and a lot of the stuff was wet and damaged, and it had to be, uh, you know, conserved. Um, I, I don't really know the full story on that, but yes, it was found on a porch, and, and we, we do have an incredible amount of his books uh, of all the founders. A couple more questions. Uh, was a Dr. Hooper named as the one of the founders, the same Dr. Hooper whose name is on the Hooper Drive at UAS? Yes, yes it is. Yes. And he was, uh, he was also connected with the state hospital. So uh, Dr. Hinker wrote an article about him and said it was very appropriate that that street should be named after Dr. Hooper. And then the other question, when did they get a hospital? W when did who? When did UAMS get a hospital, perhaps? Or no, like, when did the medical department get a hospital? Carolyn, we're assuming that you mean when the when the full-blown UAMS uh, got a hospital? Well, we moved to Markham and that was, the building was completed in 1957. And it was known as the medical center then, but it, it was basically UAMS. Yeah, up until that point, the, the UAMS, it, the, it wasn't all on one campus. They had to do their clinical work in one place, the 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 fourth location on Twelfth um, and McAlmont, uh, the city built the new city hospital right next door to the medical school. So that was where they had the um, uh, the, the clinical parts, uh, and um, and that was the first time that they had access to a hospital in that close proximity to the school. Um, and let's see, there weren't that, let's, in 1935, when they moved to the McAlmont location, uh, you would have had, what, two or three hospitals, I think, in, in Little Rock. You would have had St. Vincent's uh, Baptist uh, Memorial, the ba Baptist State Hospital, and then a couple of other hospitals, maybe. But in 1954, uh, it's when the whole campus came together and they had a hospital. Uh, alongside educational facilities. Any other questions? Were there additional changes to the laws regarding dissections? You know, I would assume so, because it seems to be a pretty regulated practice. Um, the original law in 1873 had the stipulation that um, the body had to be unclaimed. So of course now you can donate your body to science um, and that's a decision you make yourself. Whereas before, I assume unclaimed would be like family members didn't claim you and therefore your burial was not paid for or overseen. So um, that changed for sure. Um, and then I can't really think of any, I mean, that would, that would change the system entirely, right? To go from just to having abandoned bodies to um, people who chose, but I'm not sure when that happened. I'm not sure when that happened either. Uh, I, I wanna, off the top of my head, I wanna say when they moved into the, um, what's now the old state house um, in, um, was that 1911, I think, when they moved in there? Um, 
that the law changed right about there so they could have a supply of cadavers for the students, but I'm not positive on that. Um, did you mention, Logan, I may have missed it. Did you mention the monument about the di the first dissection? In uh, no, I didn't get into the first dissection, so you're welcome to provide more detail about that if you would so, like. There is a monument in MacArthur Park uh, for the first legal dissection uh, in Arkansas in 1870. Three, is that right? Mm -hmm, 1873. Um, and it's, uh, um, so that's interesting that we have a monument to the first legal dissection. Of course, and there were many other, probably other illegal dissections going on uh, before that. Mm -hmm. And we do have a, a picture of that monument in our digital collections online. And we have one more question. Does the archives keep copies of legislation related to health sciences in Arkansas. And I would say yes, for the most part. Would you agree, Suzanne? Yeah, I was just thinking we, we have a lot of, um, well, I, I don't know that we have a lot of things like Nurse Practice Act or things like that, but I know in the public health collection that we have we have a lot of uh, reports and things from, um, uh, you know, from their meetings, and there's probably, you know, various reports in, in that collection that, that um, have the legislative information. We do try to get as much as we can on the health sciences. I right, think, yeah. Arkansas. We depend a lot on donations, so if anyone out there who is listening has materials that document the health sciences history in Arkansas, we'd love to talk with you and you can get in touch with Logan. Logan's information is on the screen right there. Mm -hmm. And um, help, you can help us build our collection. Do you know at what time period did they have a football team? The, the UIMS? Yes. I think it was, early 1900s. I don't have the date right at the top of my head. Let me see. Yeah, I think it was in the early 1900s. Uh, they had an interesting nickname or the name of their team. Yeah, they were called the medics. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, we have pictures of a football team from, uh, let's see, one in 1909 and one from 1915. And I think the one in 1909 went to the state championships, but I'm not, I'm not certain of that. I know they, <laughs> they played Central a number of times, which I always find that interesting that you have these college teams playing high school teams, which there weren't very many teams to play right. uh, uh, during that time period. Any other questions? If not, I'll, I'll do one more reminder that these are this is, presentation is re being recorded and it will be placed on, on the Historical Research uh, Center's website as well on the Society for the History of Medicine um, uh, uh, YouTube channel. Sorry, I, got, I lost my train of thought there. And um, so, Logan, thank you very much for this presentation. We, thank you. Uh, it was interesting. We all learned a little bit more about one of the UMS founders. Appreciate it. And we have not scheduled our next stories from the archives, but it will probably be later. It will be later this year and we will send out information and hope you all can attend. Thank you all for being here and y'all stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a good day.